Thank you for listening to Tread Talk from Treadmill TV. If you enjoyed the shows, you can always subscribe on YouTube, listen to it on podcast, and all the runs are available on the Treadmill TV app where you can watch ad-free and download to take on the go. Today's guest for Tread Talk is Katra Corbett. Uh, she's an author of Reborn on the Run, My Journey from Addiction to Ultra Marathon. And if you get the book from her on her website, which is just her name, katracorbett.com, she'll also sign it for you. And then you get a little paw print of her good boy, Truman. Uh, she's been a very easy person to talk to, and uh, that always makes for good listening. Uh, we get to talk to her about running, obviously, uh, about authoring her book, about her dogs, and also just about what the plans look like for the future. Um, enjoy the book. To get the most out of the podcast, you should read the book. I think that's kind of the purpose here is to introduce you to books and authors that are good and enjoyable. So uh, be sure to subscribe and check out Katra Corbett's book and uh, enjoy the show. Well, great. Well, thank you for uh, setting the time apart to, to yeah, be no on worries. my little podcast. Yeah, um, I did. So for people that don't know you, I've got a little uh, bio to introduce you. So you're Katra okay. Corbett. You wrote Reborn mm-hmm. on the Run, My Journey from Addiction to Ultra Marathons. You are a rock star of running known as the Dirt Diva. <laughs> you hold several fastest known times, including the John Muir Trail in 12 days, 4 hours, 57 minutes, over 424 miles. Uh, before becoming one of the few humans to complete 100 100-mile races, You were a drug addict spiraling toward rock bottom, and your journey to sobriety was made better by running and wiener dogs, and you've reinvented (laughs) yourself into a new person. Is that accurate? That's that's very accurate. (laughs) Okay. Well, I want to talk about a few of those things in in more detail. Um, One of the things I do to kind of break the ice is ask some quick feet questions, kind of like running drills before a track meet. So... You can answer this in one word if you can, or just a very short sentence. I got 15 okay. questions. Okay. Ready to go? <laughs> I'm ready. Go. <laughs> okay. What shoe should I buy? Hoka's. Why does my, uh, and to, to put this in perspective, these are all beginner questions asked by the internet. Uh, why does okay. my leg hurt? Because you're not wearing the correct shoes. <laughs> what watch should I get? Koros. How do I make myself poop before a race? Uh, take a, like a smooth move tea the day before the race at night. Okay. Uh, <laughs> where are you running this weekend? I am running in the Eastern Sierra, lower mountains in Bishop. How do I make California. myself get faster? Uh, by listening to fast music and running really fast. <laughs> Best running movie? Oh, probably uh, Forrest Gump. (laughs) Okay. True or false? Strava or it didn't happen? I don't use Strava. (laughs) Okay. How do you carry your phone? In my Nathan pack. Have you ever done a 5K marathon? I did with my dog last weekend. (laughs) Does running hurt? It's not a marathon. Nope. Other than your book, what's the best running book? The best running book? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Um, Move on. I can't think. All right. (laughs) Pre-race meal. Pre-race meal, vegan macaroni and cheese. Why can't you just sprint the whole time? You can't sprint in a 200 mile race. (laughs) Do you just eat about anything you want? I'm vegan, so I'm really picky about what I eat. Okay. Well, that was our quick 15 questions. (laughs) You're pretty easy to talk to. Does most people say that? Yes, I am. (laughs) I like talking. I'm Italian. (laughs) All right. Um, You're known as a rock star of running. Uh, The Dirt Diva is your your catch um and i kind of thought that's a a good title for you before i read the book i didn't know that about you i just knew you from instagram and facebook and a few other things 
And I kind of thought of you as Lady Gaga because I was always wondering what she actually looks like <laughs> under that hat and the hair and the makeup and the, the piercings and everything else. So you've created quite a, a mystique. How did that come about? So I've always been into fashion. So going back before I even started running, I was really into the goth scene, the punk scene, all of that back in the day. So I was always into like wearing something fun and, you know, always creative with my outfits when I go out to the nightclubs and go dancing. So that's kind of, it's just transformed over, you know, I've always been into fashion. So when I started running, there wasn't a lot of cute stuff. Like there yeah. wasn't running skirts back in 96, you know? So I would wear tennis skirts, you know, people are like, why are you, you know, like when I show up at a marathon, my, people are like, what are you wearing? And yeah. I'm like, it's a tennis skirt. And they're like, oh, like people didn't understand me and I didn't have any friends that ran. So and I'm just like, well, I want to wear a skirt when I run, you know, I like running, wearing cute stuff. So, I mean, thank God for now. I mean, there's so many women running companies that and you see women all over the place wearing skirts yeah. but back in 96 97 i mean all the way up until early 2000s i was the only one wearing running skirts and dresses and you know huh. like tennis dresses and but now everybody makes them you know so yeah so i like fashion so i like being very colorful now because i come from that whole golf scene where i mostly wore black you know red and purple those were like the the goth colors you know so it's always so. been your thing so, not just running yeah yeah I've always been into like looking cool I guess I don't know yeah. it's just my thing expressing <laughs> yourself yeah just being very creative and other than your determination something that impressed me uh is that you're a published author but you didn't graduate high school until you went back Billy Madison style and you're the oldest in the classroom <laughs> Um, yep. <laughs> what was that process like writing a book as a, a late graduate? Uh, it Well, I worked with a writer. So because mm -hmm. I run so much, like who's I'm not going to sit down and write a, you know, be able to write a book. So a lot of it we did as me voice recording. So we would go through and we knew what we were going to write about in each chapter. It was a lot of work. Yeah. So I would record it on my runs and then I'd have to sit down and like reflush everything out because you have to, when you write, you have to write in detail because you, you know, people, you have to say the detailed information, you know, instead right. of like when you're just having a conversation. So I learned, you know, right away from my writer that I hired, he's like, you got to say, tell me everything in detail. So, you know, when we write it, we're writing in detail, like you're, you know, so he was a great, he had interviewed me. That's how I found him. So I got, you know, I was approached by a publishing uh, company, a literary agency. And they said, have you ever thought about writing a book? And I said, well, yeah. I said, I write a lot of stories and I have a lot of stories. I go, but I don't have time to sit down. Right. Like I'm super hyper and I can't sit still. And they're like, no, you can use one of our writers or you could hire one. And so Dan had written this really great article about me and I really liked the style of his writing. And so mm -hmm. we collaborated together. And so, yeah, so that's how we did it. I would uh, go out with my phone and record stuff. And then he would, I would send him the recordings and then we'd have meetings each week. Like, so we would talk and then I would mm -hmm. tell him more detailed information or if he had any questions and that's how we actually wrote it. Yeah. Cause I, I had assumed that you had probably taken some things from your blog. Um, but that it's really interesting because it seems that you work everything out on the run. You don't sit and think you run and I think. Do. True. <laughs> I do. That's just how I, I operate. Yeah. Uh, one of the themes in the book is obviously your journey from uh, being dependent on drugs uh, and being totally free from that. Um, and I thought one of the more subtle themes of moving out of dependency was moving from um, bad relationships with men to more in, of an yeah. independent lifestyle, moving from uh, not being able to hike without Suzanne and then being yeah. able to hike alone. Um living without your mom and then becoming, becoming dependable for other people, um, other folks that are in recovery, being dependable for your dogs, including Truman. Um, did you see it that way? Or is that just me reading into something? No, when you're, when you're tell, talking about it, I see it that way. Yeah. It's like, I had to go from when I quit doing drugs, I had to get rid of all my friends. So I had to learn 
to be comfortable being alone with myself. You know, it's like when you're around people all the time and all these friends, and then you get into recovery and you're like, well, all of those people are using drugs or drinking. They're still partying. And I can't be around any of those people because that would sabotage it. Not only that, and, you know, I didn't want to go to prison. You know, I got a lucky break by, you know, getting outpatient recovery treatment and the drug diversion. And, you know, I didn't want to sabotage it. I easily could have, you know, if I started hanging out with those friends again. And so I had to learn to be alone a lot of time, you know, for a long time. And even when I started my running journey, I didn't really have any friends that ran. So, you know, there was no internet back then either. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there was, there was internet, but it wasn't like now, like you Google and you ask a question and you put it in, right. like there was none of that it was when email, I started running. Basically. Yeah. And it was like books, you know, you would mm-hmm. have to find a book. And so, so yeah, I mean, I feel like I have a lot of experience, like life experiences now. So mm-hmm being able to help other people and give them information. I, you know, I think it's great. You know, it's like, I've been through all this stuff. So other people don't have to go through that because they could be like, Oh yeah, you know, that's probably not a good idea. You know, Katra said this, or she went through that and maybe we shouldn't go that direction. So, yeah. I mean, I talked to a lot of older runners like that have kids. They're like, you know, can you, would you, you know, if I had our kid email you or call you up, would you talk to them about this? They're going through something right now, you know, and in a phase or whatever. And maybe you could talk to them because you're cool. They think you're yeah. cool, but they don't think us as parents are cool. And so I've met a lot of young people through the years. Now they're all adults and they're like, I just remember, you know, you giving me advice or telling me something because my parents told me, you know, like you shouldn't get into drugs or quit smoking pot and maybe talk to yeah. Katra. And so you know, if I can help, great. And that's that's why I wrote the book too. It's like, I want people to know they're not alone. And it's not just for, you know, runners, it's for whoever, you know, maybe you have a family member that's going through something or, you, you know, so yeah. I just feel like I, by writing it and being super open and transparent, it's helping people, you know? And it's I like have heard the term alone. of rebuilding your life, but I didn't necessarily think mm-hmm. of rebuilding every single friendship from scratch, rebuilding, you know, the structure that people take for granted. And I, yeah. I guess I maybe have thought about that before, but nef- never really thought of the actual steps of doing that and how difficult that can be. And and for people that are in recovery or, you know, g- decide to quit doing drugs and drinking, it's part of it. You know, it's like you have to, if you want to be successful, you know, in your recovery, you you have to, you know, make a new life for yourself, basically, yeah. you know, it's like, it's crazy to say that, but it is. And, you know, it's really cool with having the internet and having Instagram and Facebook. Now I could see all those people that were totally messed up mm-hmm. back in the day. Like you were like, you know, a lot of people I knew died and they made it out and they're like married, have kids and, yeah. you know, they're older now. And it's, so it's nice to be able to reconnect with those people, you know, or have yeah. them following me. Like, some of my favorite people that own like nightclubs and stuff, they're, you know, they're still following me and they're like, we are just so, you know, we just really enjoy being able to watch you and watch how somebody can transform. Cause they saw me back in the day, yeah. but they didn't know how bad I was. They just knew I was this crazy, you know, I'd get drunk and be dancing at the club. And, you know, I was friends with all the owners of the clubs. I never had to pay to get in. Yeah. It was nice. And the bartenders would give me free drinks, but they're like, it's really cool to see somebody go from where you were doing you know doing I was working in a salon I had a job and all of that but they said just to see you transform your life and be become this totally different person is yeah. you know inspiring so is so. <laughs> uh our races just uh a club without drugs then you already get to hang Basically, out basically yeah. yeah you know I like doing adventures on by myself though, too. I take my, you know, I'll have friends come out and I'm like, let's go do this. You know, I've always been like that. Even when I was, I mean, I'm living in Bishop now, which is near the mountains and mm-hmm. I'm from the Bay area near San Francisco. So we have a great running community there. And then when I moved here, I was just like, Oh, I got to re meet people, you yeah. know, and everybody's so much younger that, that I've already actually inspired like this one girl, Katie, who does a lot with me. She helps me at my races she wasn't even running ultras and now she's doing hundred milers. Cause she's 
pruning me and pacing me at 200. So I'm like, you need to sign up for a 200. Yeah. She has literally paced me a hundred mile, a hundred wow. miles at a 200 mile rate. Yeah. So she's like, I'm like, you're so ready. Like yeah. she never even would have dreamed. She said of running an ultra, like she was doing Ironmans. And then I was like, Oh, you should totally do it. And then she, you know, started doing hundreds because of me. So, yeah, so here awesome. we have a lot of cool places to run us in the summer. Mostly, you know, it's like you can get out on the John Muir trail, which is, you know, mm -hmm. a, a trail that goes from the highest Mount Whitney all the way into Yosemite. And so we can run into the back country and do, you know, 60 mile loops on a training run and yeah. be back there. So, so, but anyways, all my friends from the Bay area, and now they come here and visit all the time and stay with me so they can train in the mountains. Yeah. Well, do you, you get like the, the 10 feet of snow that they get in Mammoth? No. So we're, so we do get snow in Bishop in town, but very rarely, like we had snow a couple of weeks ago. I mean, we could still drive. We're not like shoveling stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a trail in my backyard and a couple of times we've got some significant snow where I had to put snowshoes on and go run like the little two mile loop. So then I can run in the tracks. Yeah. Cause I, I'm on a, a, yeah, I'm on a running streak. So I'm over 10 years now into it. So I'm like, I have to run like at least a mile a day. So yeah. I was like, oh no, how am I going to do this? I'm not, I don't want to run in the snowshoes. It's too soft. So we, I can drive literally 15 minutes and be snowshoeing and being in snow. Wow. Like people ski out yeah. there. Yeah. Backcountry ski. So we don't have to deal with it down below and we can drive to it if we want. Nice. It. So, and I do like going snowshoeing. So I just go on the roads that are closed that are go into the mountains and I snowshoe up the roads into the lakes or whatever. So very cool. So no, you even run like the now. day after <laughs> day after a 200 mile every ultra. day. Wow. Every day. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's commitment. <laughs> yep. Um, in the book, I read about the Razorback 100 and that was yep. your one and only first place finish. Is that right? Overall. Yeah. Overall, Overall finish. finish. Um, so yeah, beat the guys, beat everybody. Nice. <laughs> and not too uh, many women can say they get overall finishes, you know. Right. Well, for people that don't understand, can you explain the difference between being an outright winner versus a completer of, of an ultra? Yeah. What's the effort like? So winning overall is meaning you beat every person there, every other person running. Um, and I didn't realize I, it was a very, it was a looped course. It was a, a fast, flat thing. And I didn't realize I was like, nobody was in front of me. You know, like you don't know, like when I'm taking breaks, it's like, mm -hmm. I, I had no idea I was in first because there's different races going on too. So we had a hundred miler, we had a hundred K, like a 50 mile. So when people are passing you, they're in the shorter races. So, right. you know, and then at night I realized, when I came through, they didn't want to tell me. And then they're like, okay, because the guy that was in front of me, he somehow stopped, something happened and he stopped for a little bit. And when I got ahead of him by two miles, then they told me because huh. they didn't want to freak me out. So then after that, though, I had all kinds of problems because I was on like a, a pace to do it in 18 hours and then I fell apart. But then I was so focused. I'm like, I got to keep moving. I can't yeah stop I'm growing up I was like sick and I hardly ever get sick like that and I had been taking Advil and that's what happened it was like in a short period of time which I'm not used to running just for 21 22 hours I had taken one too many Advil and it caused mm. like a bunch of stomach issues but I still I just kept going I'm like I don't have time to stop I gotta you know run as much as I can because I, I didn't know you know I was just freaked out when you're in the lead even when I'm first place female, it's like, once you find that out, or even if you're going to podium, you're just like, oh my God, I have no stopping. Like yeah. I can't re relax. So yeah, I really pushed myself there to be able to win it, you know? And then so, were and you it, able to re run the next day after that? Oh yeah. Yeah. I was still my running streak. As long as I get a mile in, I broke two toes once and I was still running. My, my doc, my doctor, he's like, you can't run like for, I think it was like five weeks or six weeks and I had a race coming up, but he's, it was two, it wasn't like my big toe, it was the two second toes. And he goes, just tape it up and run on your hill on that foot. And he was oh, even wow. like, I'm not going to tell you not to run. You're on a running streak. He goes, you could still hobble run. And I'm like, that's all I need to do for a mile. Wow. <laughs> so, so he I'm must like be a runner. Weeks. Yeah. He's, he's actually a cyclist and a runner. So it's like triathlete. Yeah. <laughs> that's why you go to those kind of doctors. So yeah. they, they know they're like, yeah, I would probably do the same thing. <laughs> yeah. 
So why did you pick ultras instead of, you know, the 26 mile marathons or pickleball or, you know, <laughs> why not something other than ultras? Sometimes I ask myself that question. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, should I do something else? <laughs> but I guess it's just, I'm very hyper anyways. And just, I, you know, that would be too mellow. Like if I was golfing, I, you know, I could do a game of golf, but that's it. It's like, okay, that, and I don't need to do that anymore. You know, it's too mellow for me. It's like, I need to be on the move. And so I realizing, you know, when I did my first marathon, I was like, okay, if I knew there was ultra marathons, I would have jumped right into an ultra marathon, but I didn't really comprehend that yet. I had seen Western States on, you know, wild world of sports with my dad when I was younger and, mm -hmm. but I didn't comprehend like, you know, I, that was like something else, you know? So had I found out right away after I finished my first marathon that there was 50 Ks, I would have jumped into that. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I did a 10 K and I found out, you know, there was a marathon coming up on a flyer on my car. So that's why I jumped right into that. I'm like, I could do that, you know, and just, you know, knowing about Boston and like these big, you know, when you're growing up, everybody knows, even if you're not a runner, you know, right. you've heard of Boston marathon. Cause that's like, Whoa. And even the marathon in the Olympics, you always want to watch that. Cause that's, amazing you know what those right. people are doing so um i just thought wow I, i'm gonna do a marathon and to me at that time it was a pretty big deal like i didn't know anybody that ran like my brother was a runner when he was younger my dad had run a marathon my brother had run a marathon he was just a soccer player he was the runner of the family and so when i said i was going to do a marathon he was just like that's crazy yeah. you know so it just you know, being out there training for hours on end, I just really enjoy being out like that. And so, and that's why the longer the distance, the more I like it. Like these multi days now that like 200 miles, that's my favorite distance. It's cause it's a constant challenge. Like yeah. in a hundred mile race, sure. I know like, okay, yeah, I might have, you know, 50 miles. I'll be fine. Or I could get through it like a 200 mile race. It's a lot of mental. Cause you're like, Okay, I'm at mile 100. Yeah. But you got 100 more miles to go. It's different. It, to me, like 100 miler, you're like, oh, 50 miles. Well, I could walk that if I'm suffering. You know, I could run, walk. But when you're like, I got 100 miles to go and I'm having a really bad time, it's like you better get that brain working with you and thinking positive to change your, you know, attitude and know that it will get better as it progresses. Maybe you need more food. Maybe you need to take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know well, people look at me like I'm crazy when I talk about it, but I'm like, really, it's more like doing a backpacking, you know, a fast packing, I say, like carrying a light pack and moving as fast as you can on a trail, but you're going to have aid stations instead of carrying, you know, like a, when I go out in the back country by myself for multiple days on the John Muir Trail, I try to keep my pack around 18 pounds. So, and it's about 15 pounds, 12, 15 pounds in a 200 because you, the amount of water and in between aid stations, sometimes you have to go like 23 miles before mm. you get to the next aid. And that's like an eight hour stretch. So you have to have required clothing you carry and stuff. So I look at it like that. If you can change your mind and think, instead of looking at like a hundred mile running race, you're like, it's a backpacking kind of thing. You're in the wilderness with a bunch, you know, 250 other people and. You know, it's fun to me. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> um, I convince you yet? To run to yeah, run maybe when <laughs> my, uh, I, I build up my mileage a little past eight. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I want to go back to kind of thinking about what uh, your past was like, because um, mm -hmm. one of the schools of thought on growing up and going through life is that, you know, college students are going to go to parties and get drunk. That's just a stage of life. Yeah, uh, this is something that everyone goes through, um, almost like uh, a girl trying on makeup. It's just something that you do at a certain stage of yeah. life. Do you think that partying lifestyle and uh, the drug addiction stage of life was something that you had to go through? Or do you think there were things that uh, were just out of your control? I think it was out of my control. I I, I wasn't so... Growing up, like I smoked pot or whatever, I was never like, 
I hated people that did math. So I even in mm-hmm. hanging out in, in the golf oh. clubs and all of that, a lot, a lot of my friends were doing math and I'm like, no way, I'll never do that. Well, I started dating somebody that was selling it and he hid it from me because all my friends were like, don't tell her because she yeah. doesn't do it. And just, I got like, you know, peer pressure, I guess. I was like, oh, everybody's doing it. I'm going to try it. And yeah. that's what happened with me. And I just think things from my past, you know, having been abused and things like that, that kind of led me, you know, down that path. And, you know, not everybody goes that path, but it's like you tend to, you know, try to find something that's going to make you feel better or forget about something if you haven't gone through therapy and worked on yourself, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, and, and that is actually the better way to go and not get involved yeah, in drugs. Yeah. But, you know, I have no regrets because if I didn't be that drug addict that I was and have to get off drugs, I wouldn't be this ultra runner that I am now. Yeah. I would have never found this. I would have never found this. Hmm. Yeah. There's no reason. I hated running. There was no reason. There right. was no reason for me to have found running had I not had to go through something to find a passion, you know, and get away from drugs and going to the clubs. Yeah. Um, now that you are clean, uh, mm-hmm. a lot of alcoholics say once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. What do you introduce yourself as an addict or do you say that you're recovered? What, Cause some people think that's a big important distinction. What do you say? It does. And so I, I have, my brother goes to AA and NA and all that. I don't go to meetings and some very hardcore people would say you need to go, but I go to therapy and that's always worked for me. So I went through AA and NA because I had to. And I, even when I didn't have to anymore, I went for a few years, but I just felt it wasn't for me. I mean, it's a great tool. I learned everything I needed to, 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 keep me successful but going through therapy was my main thing and having a passion finding running something that helped me um so i would say you're never supposed to say you're recovered you know because there's always that chance something can happen but i've been sober for almost 29 years so 28 years going on 29 years so that's like not even something I think about anymore. And, you know, I used to drink a lot more before I started doing the drugs, but I just look at all of that. Like it's very toxic and I am vegan and I eat pretty clean, you know? So I just wouldn't do it. Like, you know, even when I first got sober, I wouldn't even do caffeine pills. Like it was like, I'm like, that's drugs. But at night in the middle of a 200, I'm like, I need to do that to stay awake because I can't drink coffee because of the acid tends to make me Mm. get bladder infections. And so just taking caffeine pills, 200 milligrams, I'm all about espresso and all of that now. But in my early years for like the first six years of my recovery, I wouldn't even do caffeine. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Cause I remember that from the book as someone tried to hand you a pill and it was like (laughs) flashbacks. Like I don't want to take some strange pill. Yeah. And I actually, I'm going to see her in a couple of weeks at a hundred miles. Oh, wow. (laughs) Yeah, I like seeing her every now and then. <laughs> um, so you're a rock star of running, but you still have normal people problems, you know, because yes, uh, of course. We had uh, <laughs> I talked about the the what was the the race? There's like a six day race across the years. Yes, I couldn't yeah. go, but I made it happen here. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I ran for six inside. days in Bishop. Yeah, you know, it just my boyfriend decided to tinker with the vehicle. <laughs> Don't ask me why the day before. Yeah. So he was like, oh, I'll replace this and that. And so I'm like, oh. <laughs> but you know what? You have to just know things happen for a reason. Maybe I would have been driving and something would have happened and the car mm. would have broke down because he didn't, you know, because it needed to have a couple of things done to it. So, and then, you know, to rent a vehicle here, it's a small town. There was like nothing available, you know, right. it's like I could have got a small car, but I needed to put tables and all of this other stuff for like the six day race, you know, all this things that wouldn't, you know, I have a topper for the top of the car. I needed to have space. So, so I thought, you know what, whatever, you know, that I'm just going to make it work. We're going to, I'm going to run six days here. My boyfriend was able to run, but he ended up working. So he would, he's a, he works for Sierra life flight. So he flies a fixed wing aircraft and it's an air ambulance basically. So he knew he was in town. He's like, well, I'm going to make money. I'll just run in between when I can, you right. know, from flying and stuff. So, and that's what I did. And I did like 237 miles and I was happy with that. 
And I mean, I would definitely run a lot more if I was there. So, you know, it's, and they had bad weather too. Oh, so well, it was kind of like, another reason oh stay. yeah. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I was happy with my mileage. So. Okay. Well, last thing I wanted to ask yeah. you about is what's next. Um, Cause you're pretty open about your aging. Uh, Cause you yep. celebrated what birthday le- re- most recently? 58. 58. Five zero, five eight. Mm-hmm. So uh, where do you see yourself in a year, in a decade? Where does ultra fit in? Uh, running as much and, and as often as I can, still doing it. You know, it's to me, a lot of it's mindset. So getting in the gym and working out and making sure that you have strong muscles still, you know, because I, as you get older, it's like you get weaker, obviously, and you should be still working on top of like, weight training and doing things that are going to make you strong. So, and I kind of slacked off for a while and I've been back in the gym for like three months now and I could totally tell a difference, like yeah. effortless running uphill. Yeah. You know, it's like, and you know, when my dog was really sick, I kind of picked time with him, you know, it's like he, mm-hmm. I knew he had a year to live. And then, so I just focused on being with him as much as I could because I mm-hmm. knew each time we celebrated something it wasn't going to be celebrated the next year so and then the last pretty much two months of his life it was like I was carrying him around and stuff so you know and I have no regrets I'm like you know what I'll get back at it when I can and I mean it still ran every day but it's like I would do short loops just to keep an eye on him make sure he was okay so I mean he truly needed me to be his caregiver I had to be around but no I feel great I mean I don't You know, I, I think about 58 and then I think of my parents. Well, my father died when he was 49. So, but when my mom was like 58, I'm like, that seems so old. But yeah. I'm like looking at myself in the mirror and I'm like, I don't think I look 58, but no. whatever. You know, I know, I know your, my heart is 58. My, you know, lungs are 50. There's things that are your in your body. It's all, there's nothing you can do, but I see a, a sports uh, doctor. I have a cardiologist because I have mitral valve prolapse which Mm. has never affected me. And he said, because I'm so healthy, because I'm vegan, because I have low cholesterol, like my cholesterol is good, that it's not affecting me. So as long as I know all that stuff, like my heart's good, I can go out in the mountains and not be concerned about it. You know, I'm fine. Because Harvey Lewis has a friend who's a hundred year old runner, vegan. Yes, I've seen him. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, it's like, I want that to be me. Yeah. (laughs) So you're going to be on so the Rick Roll I, podcast when you're 100, just like he was after, because you've been on the Rick Roll podcast before. Yes, too, I have. You? Yeah, I so, have. <laughs> so hopefully I will be, you know. Visit too when you're yeah, 100. You, know, you just keep going, you know. It's like, I love getting outdoors every day. You know, I look forward to, you know, some days are, of course, like I said, when I was going through stuff with Truman, it was like hard to get out. You know, you're mm-hmm. just like, I'm. you get depressed, you get sad, you know, you're, little bit you know it's like your kid is getting ready to die yep. so but I just had to make the best of it and I said I needed to get out for me that I needed to have that time to think and process what was going on so and you see you know living here and living anywhere in general I mean I just don't like running on the roads but even when I do run on the roads I see stuff and I'm like I go on a side trail or adventure mm-hmm. somewhere into it you know living in a town it's great because it's not like city streets where you have to be concerned, like right. somebody's going to come and grab you or whatever. Right. But I carry pepper spray and a knife, you know, things like that. But yeah, I just hope to be able to do this as long as I can. It's like, I'm just going to keep pushing, you know, it's like got to keep challenging yourself because that keeps your mind strong and keeps your body strong. It gives you something to focus on. So you get that training because you can't just, you know, it's, you can't, a 200 mile or is not going to run for you. You have to run right. a good 200 miles. So you have to train for it. So awesome. Well, thank you for taking the time to meet with me. I'm going to yeah, be thank put you. my kids to bed soon. Yeah, that's my book too. So if anybody yeah. wants to get it, yep. They can order it. Too. Yeah, with, order uh, it through me, patrickcorbett.com. Yeah. Yes, you got the Truman Paw print. So you can yeah. order it through me. And people get, uh, I have photocopies of Truman Paw print. So I still donate the $1 to the animal uh senior rescue and i have a bunch of pictures of truman so i've been giving people pictures and in, inside yeah. the book too of him. awesome so well thank you thank again. you hopefully you can do this thank again you. sometime when you write your second book yeah <laughs> all right bye bye thanks